Hey guys, it's Tony. Here's another video on my three axis brushes gimbal. Uh, this is for you guys who haven't seen my other videos or who just wants to, you know, keep updated as you know I go along with my gimbals. And this is my three axis brushes gimbal, or should I say three axis electronic stabilizer or steady cam. So let me plug in the battery and show you guys what this gimbal does if you guys missed the other videos. So pretty much you have full stabilization of the three axes on here, pan, roll, and tilt. So you can see, we have stabilization of pan, tilt, and roll, all three axes. Now, it doesn't, however, stabilize the up and down vertical movement. So if you're doing a lot of uh, active running shots, you want to use your hands and legs to kind of dampen out the camera as you're moving along to keep the gimbal you know, from the horizontal movement. But it does somewhat stabilize because, you know, up and down, it, the camera stays nice and level. It's a lot better than holding the camera handheld or even a shoulder rig. It's pretty much a uh, steady cam setup, you know, except it's electronic now. So it's a little bit easier to use, operate, and, you know, balance out. Steady cams are really good for, you know, different unique shots for you to fly with, you know, fly your camera. It's a very uh, good setup to use itself. If you're using, like, a lightweight uh, DSLR or, like, you know, a T3i, like, entry-level T3i, or even, like, a GH3, the new GH4, Blackmagic, stuff like that, a light setup it tends to move a lot in the wind, you know, as you're getting really active and the wind's hitting the steady cam, it tends to like kind of bobble a little bit. With a uh, gimbal setup like mine's, no matter which way the wind's blowing it, this thing is not going to move because you have uh, some low torque motors on here that keeps this, you know, setup stabilized. Now, the reason why I say it's low torque is these motors were not designed to be high torque. Now, they do have some torque to them. But they weren't designed to be high torque. They were designed to be uh, precise and fast. You can see here, precise and fast. And that's why it's low torque. So you can see right there. Um, another thing that this thing can replace is a, a slider. Or what is that? A slider. So you know when you have one of those sliding tracks, you want to get those nice slider shots like so you want to move the camera. You can achieve the same thing with this gimbal. You can hold it by either two handles, move it across, or you can hold it by here and you can adjust, you know, just use your body, lean, and go slowly as you want, like so. And you can see, you can probably do it just having a multiple people, your buddies all on the side and pass along it, just because, you know, when you bump it, look at this, the camera stays nice and level. You can see, I have it really low to the ground. You can see it to my table, so you can see when I'm rolling it, the camera stays nice and level. So it's very, very neat. And I also have some videos posted in my other, uh, if you look back in my history, my, my video history, there are a few videos of me uh, showing some actual onboard recording with the camera and this gimbal setup. Another thing that this gimbal can replace is a small compact jib. You know, it's most uh, small compact jibs, you can, you know, it's about five, six foot reach. You can do the same shot up here, go up, 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 and you get the same shot. You can see the head stays nice and level, the camera right here for the tilt. Now what's neat is you have motorized control, so as you're going up, you can you know easily look up or look down if you want, like so. So you can adjust the speed of how fast you want the camera to move when you move the joystick. Another thing you can do is manually control the camera angle by just using the tilt bar. So right now I think I bumped it earlier, so I need to be careful when it's powered on, but you can actually go up, look up. Or even look down as you're coming down for those different uh, cinematic shots, you know, when you're uh, using just an, like another tool in your arsenal to use. Let me turn this off real quick so I can put it down and talk more about the gimbal. You know, by all means, this gimbal is not going to replace, you know, the other setups like steady cam, sliders. They all have its advantages for different, uh, you know, uses. But for this one right here, the gimbal... It can be another tool in your fleet, you know, it replaces a lot of that stuff, especially if you're going somewhere by yourself. You don't have a lot of, you know, hands. You only have two, two arms and two hands, and you can only carry so much. It's better if you can carry one tool and use it for all type of, you know, purposes, you know. You can do steady cams quickly to a slider, quickly to a small jib setup, all in one tool without having to unload all of your gear, take out, you know, put everything together and balance and all that stuff. One tool does it all. So I, I think it's a very neat tool that pretty much every uh, cinematographer, even photographers can use. Now the reason why I say photographers is if you like to shoot a lot of photos, a lot of, you know, uh, wildlife, a lot of using telephoto lens, 
With this gimbal, you can easily fit a 200 millimeter lens on here. You know, Canon L series 200 millimeter lens, and just pretty much have it max zoomed in. You can see a bird or you know somebody standing from far, far away. And now with using a uh, USB or any kind of follow focus type remote, you can actually pull focus and just hit a little button. We'll take a picture because you know handheld without using a tripod or a monopod. You're holding handheld, your hands always moving kind of like this. By using fancy sensors and electronics, it does all the work for you. You can move it as much as you want, and it keeps the camera pointing level, and you can you know get better results, especially if you're outside up in the hills. It's really muddy. You don't want to put your tripod down. A lot of gears tends to you know just get really dirty. Everything is lifted off in your hand. You can, you, you can hold it and just get the shot that you want. So it's a lot of different uses that this gimbal can actually do. And you know, they all have this once again, advantages and disadvantages. So this gimbal is not gonna be, you know, a 100% perfect replacement for anything. It's just another tool that makes life a lot easier if you're, you know, in a camera enthusiast, you like to shoot this as a hobby, or even if you're like a serious photographer, or even a serious, you know, like a, a serious guy who likes to shoot videos, it's very a uh, useful tool to have. It's just you know a different uh, use for the setup, new technology. So it's not a hundred percent perfect yet, but it's pretty much new here. I'm using the Alexmos controller with the new update on here. I have an Oki follow focus. I saw a Dave B's video. He actually used one of this on his gimbal, and I was, I was like, hey, perfect, because you can pull focus, you can change camera settings on here without having to touch the actual camera itself. Now the thing is, it's wired. So you have to be careful what wire you use. Make sure the wire is you know thin and flexible because if the wire is too stiff, it's gonna restrict movement and you won't get the best performance. But you know it's better than paying you know a grand, two grand on one of those you know Red Rock follow focus, which works very good. But you know it's it's higher cost. It's more for the movie people, not just you know enthusiasts and low budget you know uh, guys like me. Uh, you know, if you guys are interested, I'm also offering uh, these gimbals, you know, fully built, set up, and tuned. When you guys get it, you just got to mount on your camera to the quick release plate. I have a quick release plate on here, so you can easily, you know, make adjustments by here by setting the camera back and forth. What's also neat about that is, if you're changing lens, you know, not everyone wants to use one lens. If you change from a 16-35 to a 24-105 or even a 24-70, you will have to adjust the CG of the tilt. So by having a quick release plate, you can easily adjust it and go shoot right away without having to spend 30 minutes to an hour of you know tuning and balancing and stuff like that. You can easily make adjustments and take it out. And me take it out, I'll show you guys. Now the camera comes off very easily, so you can pack it up, put it back in your backpack or you know, camera bag, and you're good to go. So it's a very nice uh, feature to have on here. Um, you know, I'm off, I'm offering a lot of services. You know, if you guys already have a gimbal and you need to fine tune or you need to be balanced, if you're local, hey, big plus. You know, give me an email, uh, send me a message on YouTube, whatever you guys want. But I have my email in the description box below. But feel free to send me an email and I can help you. You know, tune your controller. It's not as easy as some would think for your first time. You, it's like trial and error. You just have to play around with it. But I've been messing with this one for about a few months now, so I pretty much have the hang of how everything works. I think I've kind of mastered tuning uh, one of these gimbals because I have a lot of guys asking me, you know, sending me emails and messages. Hey, I bought a gimbal and I can't get it working. And the first thing is, you know, who built it? Did you build it? Is it built correctly? Is it balanced? Is the gimbal set up correctly? Is the controller tuned? Is the controller programmed correctly? So a lot of things can go wrong if it's your first time building it. You know, it may, I may make it sound like it's very hard to assemble. It's not really as hard as you think, but you know, if you're used to doing something like this, it's not that hard. But if you're first time building stuff, first time you know soldering on connectors to any electronics, first time programming boards, it can be a little bit difficult. And you know, something is not right, it can just give you problems after problems, and you just you know run around in circles trying to see what's wrong and troubleshooting, just get very discouraged and disappointed. But that's why I'm here, you know, so I'll, I'll help out a few guys already, actually a lot of guys already on, you know, building setups like mine. And it's just, it's a lot of work involved, you know, it takes me a few days to, you know, build one from the ground up and tune it and balance it. It just takes a while because you have to, you know, move it around, use it and see what the camera's seeing before, you know, you can use it. Because a lot of guys, they sell gimbals for over 2500 bucks, but 
it's not balanced, it's not tuned, so you have to learn how to do all of that stuff yourself. I'm doing all of this for you guys, if you guys need help, once again, feel free, you know, send me an email once again. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, it's getting way too long, I want to keep it as short as possible. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, once again, if you guys like this video, be sure to click like. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe, because I will be posting some more videos up very soon. More about my gimbals, more about the features, more about balancing, and more videos on tuning the controller. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and have a great one.